that. But I hope that we can spend more time focusing on what we need to be doing now as we move forward for the inevitable coming situations. Um, so I, I really hope that we can be better prepared, and I'm, I'm pleased to see that Miranda and Bruce are here, because I hope that as a, as a product of this um, seminar that we'll have some documents that we can share with everybody, and that we can pass along to them to say, let's, let's get something going here. Um, when things fell apart and we were all told, continue teaching without your students being present. It reminded me a little bit of that, that shock that we had when SARS happened. Uh, we did have quite a lot more tools going on. I felt really fortunate at that time that I could get Sean on the phone <laughs> or online and say, hey, what's going on over there? Um, and, and I felt like uh, Sean had a lot of really good advice at that time. And our ability to share during that critical point, um, I thought was, was really useful. As Sean and I were on Zoom the other day, preparing today, we, we kind of thought, you know, what were some of the, the critical issues that came up? So we, we, we went through a list of things of how we reacted to the situation. And of course, the very first one was confusion. What do we do? How do we cope with this? Um, how do we convert everything from face to face to completely online to online courses? What about assessments? What about exams? Is it uh, things right down to uh, getting students' attention to can we get them to participate with the microphones and the videos? Fairness of, for students who left Hong Kong. Okay, a lot of things came up. And um, we quickly discovered that different universities, different institutions were doing different things. Okay. Uh, and not all of them were perfect, I'll do this uh, We were lucky at, at UST from the top down from senior management, the president, the provost office, they made a decision right off the bat. And they set up a system that was very useful. And we just followed suit in a sense in that way. And then at the CLE, we started to put together a workshop uh, to, with our department on how to convert some of the things online. Uh, and then, well, we thought, well, what are the other institutions doing? How can we maybe learn from them? And that's when Patrick and I started talking, and I think that we reached out to follow you because, you know, you guys were hit quite hard. <laughs> and, um, but similar, similar issues, similar problems, similar issues. I know that as everybody came along today, the, the first thing that we started to talk about, and, and, and I think this is natural when you start to see other colleagues, is you know how are things took place? People came up here and there's like, some people said, wow, you guys were hit hard. And I thought, wow, we, we got off quite easy. So we, we just wanted to start off um, by thinking about, you know, we've got everybody here today um, together. And, and I think this is a good opportunity for us to basically compare notes about what happened and hopefully to begin planning for future uncertainty. And ultimately, I hope in the end, we're going to think about how we can coordinate or collaborate. So we, we created a Google form. This is the only online thing that we're going to do. But we do have a, a Google form that I'm hoping uh, each group can complete. If you go to, and, and all of the computers should have a keyboard. I should have tested this. It's a brand new room. It's our first time in. All of the computers should have a keyboard. Or if you have somebody with any kind of device, hopefully with a, uh, that you can type in. <coughs> We've created this form, and what we'd like you to discuss and write is basically to think about, focus, and you'll have a, we'll give you 10 minutes to think about this. But I'd like you to begin by thinking firstly about what was some of the barriers that you found to teaching and learning. So obviously, students weren't present. Um, we had a lot of issues like, you know, there was an assessment, a, a spoken assessment. How do you conduct that spoken assessment when your students aren't present? Um, there were 
things like uh, you know going into Moodle and, and building new things on the fly. I'd like you to think about what were some of the barriers that you encountered to being able to deliver effective teaching and learning when the situation hit first. Then the second item to think about is how did you deal with that barrier? And finally, but most importantly, what do you think could have been done if we had prepared <coughs> better for the situation to help us deal with that? Yeah, so basically, it's, it's a three-part um, questionnaire. There's just these three questions on the questionnaire. And what we're going to do next after this is we're going to try to pick up on that third point of what, what might have helped us be better prepared so that we can deal with these issues. And after you've had a chance to just talk about this for a few minutes, then each group will think about one of those items of preparation. So that hopefully by the end of this, we will have thought about what should we be doing now in, in the, the remaining time between now and the beginning of the semester, as well as what should we be doing next semester and the semester after that so that the next time this happens, whether it's sorrows <coughs> or protests, whatever happens, that we're better prepared to react. Because I think um, some of the things that we're talking about, like technological barriers, might be one of them. But we found, at least at UST, that that probably was our least barrier. People think of the technology quite quickly. Okay, fine, I can get into Zoom. I know how to set it up, get students in, and everything. But they're not doing what I want them to do anymore. So the pedagogy suddenly shifts. Right? So is that the barrier? How do we make use of that? Right? How do we overcome that kind of barrier? And I think not only is it useful for us to think about this for the next situation or the next crisis, I think this is useful for course design overall, right? Because I think we're starting to learn that, hey, online learning isn't that difficult to set up, <coughs> but setting up good online learning is difficult. And how do we ensure that pedagogy is not falling behind technology in that sense. So if this is a positive wash back that we can get from this kind of situation. Okay, so we'll give you a bit of time to break into groups. These are the three questions. We, we need the to um, give us permission to go to the form. Ah, let me start <laughs> discussing. Start <laughs> discussing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I apologize. The default when you create a form on the Hong Kong U, Google Docs, the default is that it will limit the uh, who can get in. I will fix that right now. Once you get into the form, these will be the questions. So you've got the questions. Begin to discuss it. And as you begin to discuss it, I will fix my form. <laughs> I apologize. No, that's what he's doing. He's going to get well, for me, there wasn't too much because for two courses, a big course that I teach, uh, we were lucky because, you know, when all the uh, stuff was happening in China first, you know, and then our students decided to follow suit. They actually carried me there, like all the elevators, and I went to work, and everybody's standing up, so I mean, here goes, and the, and, the, and the students are sitting in groups with their, and then they come up with me, and they come up with me. So, you know, that's why we're here, we, we don't we would like you not to cross the line and be in the barricades. You know, because we're boycotting. All right. Say, okay, we respect okay, so it should work for you guys. And we all left. <laughs> but but the last component in the last two weeks is just public speech. It was a public speech. A speech. What I did have is they did their research report because it was a press report. And they, they we were supposed to have a one hour. And now I had to transcribe them and send them to the individual via email, which isn't the same. But I use Google Hangouts and Google Apps are my users are Google LMS, so it's more interactive, so it's trying to make still ask questions and use screen change. So I was taking pictures of their reports and I was going to shock people.
So I think that was the greatest barrier. Oh, no, we, we, we lost that sort of, I'm explaining something you know, face to face right because you understand. I can see if they're understanding or if it's good. I could you know, clarify things for them because that's the only opportunity. Oh, I just had. didn't occur to me a barrier being tear gas. <laughs> we just decided to get rid of the group presentation at the end. So, you know, we just adjusted the marks accordingly. That was the one assessment that we lost out on. I was trying to have some continuous assessments. Probably you. That was a problem. It sounds a bit similar to what I have in the We had so many different kinds of horses and it's kind of depended on each one. Likewise, I was still. That, that was the hardest thing, especially for the mainland Chinese students, because Lingnan University came up with this two-factor authorization. Do you have that at all of you? That in order to sign into your email or your LMS, you have to get a like. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll get, I'll get, I'll get a, a two-factor approval. I gotta use Duo, right? So the thing is, when they go back to their home countries, they're not using a, a, a Hong Kong phone anymore. They can't get that message, so they can't log in to to the to the system. And that's something that the university would never force out, and nobody can get into Moodle, nobody can get into the portal, nobody can get access, and nobody can access their emails. Because you need to access your emails, and it's two-factor. Like, like, even right now, I'm on the email, I wonder if I'm going to access my emails. I figured you'll be able to save problems. So I ended up redirecting all of the emails to the email. Yeah, they did it to prevent it. Uh, see, I need a two-factor just to get in my email, and I'm on the email. So now I gotta get a push. Yeah, so I mean that that's what that's something the university implemented for everybody in the year, and that's, it just came into effect for staff. So that was a big that was a big problem with you know students cannot contact the or, or even their university email account. So lucky for me, I was on Hangouts, which is a Gmail account, but I can't get the Gmail. That's another thing. But yeah, but you can't sign into the link and VPN because they have the VPN without that two factor operation. So they can't access Moodle, email, Moodle, LMS, everything to sign in off, -site, off campus every time. No, our, our email does. If you set up, the problem is they go back to their home. So it's set up. So then you can't redo it. <laughs> it, it's really <laughs> But it, it isn't just me, like, uh, Russian students oh, yeah. understanding, you know, they can't even well, access it. Well, we won't well, well, holidays, I suppose, we have the same problem. Well, my, well, my students outside, of, except for the <laughs> <except for laughs> mainland, they're trying to Google Hangouts. Because I'm in Europe, I didn't know where you live. And Google Hangouts, they can still contact me. So, how did you overcome it? How did I overcome it? Yeah, I mean, at your place, when the students weren't able to access, what did you do? Well, what we did is we emailed. <laughs> like, like, because let's say for uh, for our course, the university didn't like that we were just going to prorate our, our, our assessments that we already go Because in my course, everything is a DM. 75% of the program is written in my course. And there was a 25% examination reading and listening, 12 and a half each. So we decided not to do it. And then the university came back and said, no, you have to give it to us. So we gave, uh, we just gave the reading portion. And we gave them a week to do it. We placed it on Moodle, but we also emailed the exams. And then we said, you have this time to mail them back, right? We weren't concerned too much with security at this time. We were worried about satisfying the university environment. And since it was such a small amount, 
So we don't know. I won't know until next week if there are any students that actually do not submit. Can they appeal next semester? You know, when they get their final grades and they get zero, because is one of those appeals that you know grounds to get their I didn't get the notice. But I think this is a big issue across the board. Certainly for us, you know, we had students going back. To well, we didn't. Yeah, we didn't. It was in the. And they were it was in the. We just took it out. It was just so taken out. Yeah. Yeah. So rather than saying you don't have to come, yeah. 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 So they don't have three choices. Or they don't realize that they're going to be choices. I think one way to go about it is to assume that the students provide the alternative. So like even when I go to my students' accounts and I go, they have preferred email and, and another one, but they don't, they're both Lingnan University emails, right? So they should be giving an alternative email in their home country that they're accessible in their home country. And would that be well case? Many of our students are year one students. This happens to be semester one, so we end up with a bunch of really, really confused people. Yeah, yeah. Where it doesn't matter what semester. Well, I mean, if you're in year three, if you have been here now for, for a couple of years, people <laughs> handle <laughs> things better. But the students, I mean, they are just friends from secondary school. They just couldn't. Yeah, especially they were not participating. They were not participating. They were not participating. They were like, they were like, yeah, okay, that's good. Please, that's what I mean. And the consulates, yeah. uh, like the Russian yeah. consulate, yeah. yeah. the the they weren't going to originally. So I ended up waiting for the dog. Yeah, waiting for Seeking, I mean, hoping that someone would seek my help. But nobody, I mean, not many people actually. I don't know how successful it was, but our ITS tried to set up a mirror of our home Moodle site. But even if that worked, it wouldn't have allowed it to be intervened. Or rather, synchronous. In other words, you couldn't have done anything that required no real time communication. Even though you could replicate all the content, anything that required them to be online at the same time. No, there's no way to do that. Or a video chat. In some of the courses we had, we had a detailed answer to it last week. Some of the teachers really good time. And we ended up posting this in Moodle, so we still do your research study and things. And that's how we call it. What course did you teach this year? Students. Yeah. Well, I mean, in your case, it works if you had the students heavily I just got one of the semi medical certificates saying, and I dislocated his yeah. We'll just we'll just go for two more minutes and then we'll ask you to click submit. So One thing, two more minutes. I know all of you yeah. want an opportunity yeah. yeah. to read too. So so we need to move on. And you can click read submit read more than once. Only three. Was uh, they had a they had a presentation. What, what do you wish? Was to be a group presentation. Decided maybe they could communicate for themselves and submit that video. But then we're still running into that submission problem for students that are over 
Yeah. So, right. But then again, we're looking at that. You could write your report, you could video your report, you could do an audio video report. It's some way to, to assess the oral communication abilities. But preferably, you want that to assessment. You know, like you said, moving forward and like preparing for the last three weeks, all my students have told me about the second half was this course, you know, these elements of the 17th of November, we just had consultations. You were prepared to attend the final presentation skills. When the last week of the semester, those two things were canceled. The balance between those two. That's one thing that people want to practice. To get enough writing in all the classes. Too much writing. I just analyzed the street. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I think some of our departments have the following statements to the university speakers that you guys have experience and are comfortable with and you can spread the message very quickly. Right? Uh, so maybe this is something that other departments will really like to yeah, yeah. Okay. Right, they're not reasonable. <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a lot of really good, there's a lot of really good discussions going on, so I don't want to interrupt, but I would like to start to transition, because I'm sensitive to time, and I know all of you have places to go and people to see and things to do also. And I would like to transition towards the last part. So rather than going through and rounding up all of your all of your responses, um, and I will display all of your responses up here so you can see. Um, but what I'd like to start to think about is what should we be doing now to prepare for the future so we're, we're better prepared. And it doesn't need to necessarily be, this is preparation for an emergency. It could well be, this is how we could build in preparation so that we're just teaching better. And I know certainly there's been discussions here about you know, the value of being able to communicate online well. And you know, you, you know, this, this Zoom, and a lot of our students here, you know, they, even though we have Zoom and there's the capability for them to use video, they, they still don't speak and they want to type their responses. But it's a valuable skill to have. So I'd like to transition and just start to think about, you know, what is the needs that you've identified in the first part? As you were, as you got to part three and, you're, and you were thinking, okay, if only we had had this, we would have been better prepared. Um, if, you, if you think about those needs that you've identified, what do you feel like we should be doing going forward? And as, as you think about Going forward, there will be some things that might be urgent, and that was you know, certainly, I know you were talking about two-factor two authentication. And students who couldn't get to their local telephone couldn't access their email from Lingnan, and because of, because of security. So that, to me, seems like, wow, that's a pretty urgent one. The, 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 the university needs to have a kill switch, and they need to do it now. <laughs> Yeah, and so, so that was quite an urgent one. Other things, you know, they might be longer term. For example, integrating, uh, integrating online communication tools like Zoom into our courses. That might be something that we want to think about over the longer term. Yeah, maybe that's something that next year we can roll out. So if I get to think about how urgent are these things, and then, you know, how long would it actually take to do it? So I, I don't know how long it would take your IT department to kill. Uh, I don't have that to, power. To have a kill switch. Uh, no. I, don't, I don't have the power to tell them to do anything. Well, and I even tell you if, they wouldn't do Even it. if we don't have the power, maybe maybe the action needs to be, we, we should be exerting pressure on them to make sure that next time around. And then finally, what resources would be needed to, to make this happen? So if, if we can all think, if every table can hopefully think of at least one need to help us better prepare and try to think through that so that by the end of this, Sean and I can take whatever document you generate here, and this will just be on paper, any notes you can make, so I've given everybody a, a pen and paper, you can try to jot that down, and we will collate that and circulate the responses in the end. And we have about 10 minutes until the end. Yeah. Oh, we can extend it, can't we? Oh, we, we, can, out? we can stay. We can stay. I'll stay with you on my mark. We can extend it over beer and, and, and nice tea. We all do video. I have terrible. We did have video. I think the training. Yeah. Oh, wow. I think the training is very good. This is well, the team of e learning over the university. Two, three, four. We give the users designers. We just we, we have that. We didn't give no, the students any time. We have two guys coming, and they are actually all the same to them. We, we, really we have more than two guys, believe it or not. A lot of us are actually well versed how to do it. The only thing is, nobody wants it to be done. Everybody thinks the way that the content delivery is perfect, and I have three, four years left, and I'm substantiated, and I don't have to change shit. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's a hard sell in regular times. 
Well, once, once, once the, the kind of urgency comes, then everything goes out. I've gone to seminars. I did this before. Just seven videos. I didn't tell you that. Whereas, you know, these same seminars, they were all the same time. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, ye
Well, that's where Christine is alternatively. She has the two different modes, right? Yeah, in a, in a perfect world, they do a group presentation. In an imperfect world, then they narrate uh, a video, right? Where we don't get to see them, but it's a PowerPoint yeah. show with, with a narration behind it, and it's got a different group. But it's still uh, presenting that, that, that content. And that actually works well. I like that. I would actually yeah. spend that on my own. The other consideration is our classes are usually three hours, and I don't think this is one of the reasons why I don't want to work. I find it saucy. I try to stop. But no, you kind of do three hours. So it has to be a combination. We need to consider that. Maybe an hour and a half as well. How they work. It's the same problem with discussion form activities. Some kind of combination. Three hours. Sticking with it three hours. They go in and they never talk. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, we're still to be crowded with administrators who assume that the whole idea of face-to-face -to -face tuition taking place for one three hours is something that can be changed. And what we do or not is extra. I wonder if this is a good time to kind of chip away at those traditional ideas and, you know, getting locked into that three hours to be able to go back to the senior administration and say, hey, this will help us next situation. I think I realized that the potential can be identified still. But at the same time, I think level one is the lowest. They just answer the management. In the management mindset, the whole idea was how do we cope with the situation? How do we need to face to face? Right? We should also conduct some jobs. They still see things in that way. Um, but like, so the only thing for the learning as a as a troubleshooting replacement is not as an alternative. So we really have to really get together to whoever is in the middle and try to speak with the one fine. No, they're not doing anything. And then not just by looking at e-learning, I mean, we talk a lot about flipped classrooms, but also experiential. Just the new non-traditional ideas of getting out into the environment. That, that's really been a big thrust. That's why the new course is service learning. 18 hours is out in the real world investigating the video, the video the recording, you know, so they're only, you know, and then reporting back on that, so that, that's a good way, but I, there's a difference, because the course, for the discipline-based courses, we can use, uh, uh, you know, we can do that for the one, uh, one hour, one and a half hour, and then do a, a Zoom, like, face-to-face -face for the tutorial, but for English, like you said, we teach four hours, are there two hours, and then four hours a week, not three, so, so yeah, to, to do that would be really, really hard, but to have some sort of group work, because I break mine into groups, so assign groups maybe at the beginning of the, uh, after the first month, give them, have some group work that they can actually uh, work on, like that. <laughs> Uh, so my research reports may help us uh, come up with a methodology, I mean, right? Methodology of your age projectors and send them in, right? And then up on a special board that people can have a like, peer assessment or something like that. So, yeah, there has to be that collaboration with the students and the team on the street or in the You know, the real slowly but the idea that uh, some professors are just sharing their notes, and, oh, that's it. There's a question of quality as well. Well, we have to down much. We got a good discussion. Secretary. I don't 
<laughs> have you heard of the big the worst, blue button? The worst part is, even button. if you slip away, you have to walk past well. five flat and get home. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> because you don't have to sign in, you just have a code and send the code out. Those DVD boys, you just can't get away. Like Zoom, but it's, 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 it's a lot. The big blue button. It's not like a hot No, no, it's just like it's just like Zoom. Zoom is video. Yeah, and this is it here. But here you can actually have your PowerPoint. Like on Zoom, you can have your PowerPoint. Yeah, Zoom, you can have your PowerPoint. So it's exactly the same. And you can integrate it in your MLS. Zoom does a lot of it. We had nothing. I talked to a couple of people in business for a little while. I had two people who, when I asked them, okay, what do you use? What's good? Zoom is great. Zoom is my favorite. Well, my university was just doing Zoom because they just did a, a, a conference. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, they're the ones who. I don't know if they have a license, but it was. I had this. It's got a lot of different functions. Yeah, it says link that to us. You can share your screen as you're talking to the test questions. You must have it. Is it like a real time yeah. interaction kind of thing? It's integrated. I don't know. It's just got it. Yeah, it's quite flexible. I mean, you have to learn it. Then we did it with the LDC. It was kind of like a But I think she was going more on the vision. It was quite flexible. You might get some of the shows that were showing the time. But a Chinese person. I should all make you some videos on notes. But now I feel like it was not like every teacher should be more. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna start to round things up. I will collect your notes. Don't put your name on it. I know where she lives. She's gonna see me on the ferry. Um, no. I, hopefully, you've got something. On paper, I wonder if there were any really great ideas that came up in your group that you thought this is important. We really need to action. We need to, to take some action on this, and it's it's good that we've got two directors in the room today. So, if we have great ideas, maybe they can, you know, early tomorrow morning get started on this. Does anybody have a great idea they want to volunteer? Brandon, what about your group? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, we were talking about the need to develop singing videos on how to use technology. Yeah. So this was important for us. Uh, I think this was important for other centres. Uh, so if we want to use technology, this is for both the teachers and the students. Um, it's impossible to know the technology that your students know, and also really that the teachers know as well. So having training videos there ready for technology. But the problem is that the technology changes very rapidly, so what we are using now may not be appropriate for the next year. So do we keep updating those in anticipation? That's the question, I think. Yeah. For what we did at CLE is we just picked a handful of technologies. Canvas, we know that it's university support, so we that was the main one we pushed uh, because that put all the support back onto the university. Uh, and then we picked a couple of other tools that we were confident in, and we just gave advice on those three things. Because if we tried to show too many tools, that would just confuse all the teachers. Makes, it makes a lot of sense, doesn't it, too? I mean, because if we are going to have some kind of training materials, and if 
it's just the constantly moving goalposts in terms of you know the technology is developing. If we can isolate and say, okay, you know, Zoom seems to have come to the surface. A lot of people seem to be using Zoom. Uncle Yu has now got a license for everybody. US um, UST has a license, and I know Mark said he was in a Zoom meeting. The, the it's basic like, license, we just checked. It's but nonetheless, it seems like you know Zoom might be one of those okay. things that now is, is a, hopefully a standard. So it, yeah. it's a good idea, isn't it? But at least if we if we did training, we'd have to have some standards about what are the core things that we want to train in. I think uh, um, inviting the I don't know how every department, how your infrastructures are, your your setup is, but we have a pretty good IT team in our in our center. Uh, I think maybe getting even the IT teams to communicate across institutions and share guidelines would be. Uh, our IT, IT guys have talked a number of times, right? It helps. I think we also found, though, that training videos for teachers and students really needs to be, needed to be created by teachers. They can't be, they can't be created by IT guys and girls. Um, yeah, because the teachers know the pedagogical applications and what we're going to be using them for. And also know how to scaffold information in manageable bits for students to be able to. to uh, yeah. and it was it was certainly from my perspective. I felt like we were in such a rush yeah. that we didn't have adequate time to kind of pick what's the best way. To, you know, we didn't have time to discuss what's the best way to achieve task X in a way that. Kind of everybody had a chance to have input, and we, we felt comfortable, and so there was just these quick decisions being made. We've got to get this done today, so do it however. So I think it's uh, it'd be good if we could kind of initiate these discussions now and start the training materials so that when the urgency arrives, we're a little bit more prepared. Any other, something that came up there, I think, and it leads on from what Miranda was saying. I think we need to think about to what extent we want to embed um, IT, e-learning tools, whatever they might be, into a course, bearing in mind in our place it could be 50 teachers teaching their course, mm. and to what extent you want to make the things available and then say to each teacher, okay, you do the basic training, you decide to what extent you're going to use X, Y, or Z. And I think there's a balance there to be had because we certainly don't have the resources to put 45 courses online so that they're online versions of our courses. It's just not possible. So you've got that balance. Um, and I think so related to that is what you were just talking about, decisions. I don't think it matters if everybody's not involved. In a situation like that, you have to make a decision very quickly. And um, particularly, I have very instrumental with that where you know I said, well, what do you suggest? What's well, good? And so it's like you look at a couple of things, but a few people mm -hmm. say, okay, panopto. Two days later, an email goes out to teachers, here's an email link, learn how to use panopto, it's easy, do it. And to be honest, that's all we did, and we've had very, very little technical kickback from teachers. Mm -hmm. I mean some of my colleagues might disagree. But um <laughs> Technically, I agree with Sean. It's got to be simple stuff. Mm -hmm. It's got to be the very basics, because otherwise people like me would be using it. So, Zoom, Panopto, what about us to use wisely? Collaborate. Well, the university has Blackboard Collaborate, mm -hmm. which is, it's good, but we haven't used it much. Not so easy no. as mm -hmm. some of the other platforms. Yeah. And that's the, the trade off you were talking about. If the university's got it, sorry, you were saying Sean. If the university has got an LMS, and the logical thing is to use the tools on that, but then we have questions about our university's LMS. Uh, we run two LMSs sort of in parallel, which confuses things a little bit. Um, so it's questions like that. I think it's the it's the meta questions that have to be decided um, from on top, if you like. And then I think it's got to be down mainly to individual teachers and the skills that they are able to um, pick up. And it's going to vary. There are going to be teachers who are going to be 
do it at a very low level, minimal level, because that's what they're comfortable with. Mm. To my way of thinking, that's what we're going to have to accept. There's no point in embedding stuff into courses if people don't get it. So I think it's a balance. No, I think you're right. It does need to be balanced. But I like what our university did at the top level the provost department is they, they gave the option of Zoom, uh, asynchronous learning, uh, video capture, uh, and PowerPoint, or just paper-based readings and email. Uh, so they gave the option on the mode of delivery. But where they were very strict on was the principles such as make sure that you don't uh, they give equal opportunity to all students. So it was the principles that they were more <coughs> stringent upon. Right? And so that's the main message that we had to give to all our teachers as well. If you're going to go with one mode, make sure that it's accessible to all students. That, that, that's one of the main things. But then the university provided very key uh, guidelines for each of those examples. If it was just PowerPoints or emails, what you can do. If it was Zoom, what you can do. And then what I like that for Zoom is, I don't know if you know Roger, our associate provost at UST, he led the discussions or the training in Zoom himself, and he invited all the deans and the heads of the departments to learn Zoom. And then he allowed them to go to their departments and, and train people down. So it's kind of a trickle down effect in that way. So at least in that way, there was some sort of standardization across the entire university. Now, people still did what they wanted to do. But that's where the flexibility comes. Yeah, but you see, you have leadership in your university. <laughs> 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 the idea of any of our senior management yeah. doing anything like that is extraordinary. It has to be driven by heads or perhaps the. They were too busy rescuing students, our senior well, That's true, <laughs> But no, I, I, I think your university and Hong Kong U. From what I could see, you know, you were well prepared. You, you, your senior management were actually thinking about these things even before our event. Nothing was being done. We were making decisions. Senior management did nothing, absolutely nothing. So I think what your universities did was absolutely right. Very supportive, presumably. Right? Even if you disagree with them, at least you know that there's a policy. There. Other than that, it's a great place to work. Yes. <laughs>